Imagine a world where zombies have taken over and run rampant across the streets, wreaking havoc and eating people wherever they go. That would sound like a living hell to most people, but not this guy, since with how he's living he's already practically a zombie. He lives a constant cycle of work, and tomorrow he's still got to go to work again. It all started three years ago, when he first landed his dream job. He thought it was going to be all sunshine and rainbows, and it looked like that's what it was going to be. Everyone was nice and cheery, and he even met an absolute stunner, sorry, on his first day. It looked like everything was coming up for Tendo, but reality is often disappointing. That day, after that customary office party, the mood suddenly shifts, and the other workers enter drone mode. They pull two consecutive all-nighters at work, and he wasn't allowed to go home until two days later. And that was the day that he realized that his corporation was going to exploit him. The next morning, he wakes up and suddenly doesn't feel all that enthusiastic about his job, but he already went to university for it, so he might as well see it through. The company has got some great policies like vacation days that no one is ever allowed to use. We got unpaid overtime, we got underpaid workers, and a screaming man-baby for a boss. Who wouldn't want to work here? And don't forget the best part, crippling health problems that no one cares about. By the second year, Tendo is starting to succumb to the crippling health issues, and to make it better, his boss gives him another pile of work to do. The only thing keeping him sane is salary and the thought that he'll be able to have a chance with her. But it just keeps getting worse for my dude. Saori is already freaking the CEO of the company, and there goes the last bit of sanity. Tendo now has no idea why he's still even working there, he's gone off the deep end. So much so that he walks into traffic hoping to meet truck Kun, but he has no such luck. He can't get a different job since all the other ones will be just as bad, and if he leaves, he'll just be making it worse for the other employees. By the third year, Tendo is really being pushed, it's gotten so bad that he even tried train Kun just so he won't have to go to work. And this is where he is now, in full-on zombie mode. All he can think about is work now, and everything is in black and white. He wakes up the next morning and has a mini panic attack about not wanting to go to work. He then gets dressed and is about to go to work. But as he drags himself out of house, he notices that there is a letter in his mailbox. He forgot to pay his parking pass, so he trudges over to the building manager's room to try and explain why he didn't pay it. As he gets to the door, he keeps knocking but there is no answer. He spots a half-open door and heads in to talk to the building manager, but what he finds is not what he'd normally expect. He sees the building manager neck deep in someone's guts, and that is the first bit of color he's seen in a long while. He bolts out of the room and tries to run out of the building, but he only finds more zombies waiting for him outside. He turns around and runs upstairs, and all the while he's thinking, what am I gonna do? If this keeps up, I'm gonna be late for work. But as he sees a crashing plane going down overhead, he has an epiphany. All the bosses that made his life a living hell. Those bitches are probably dead. He doesn't have to go to go to work anymore. His life now has meaning again and he can finally see all the color in the world once more. He sits on a rooftop and thinks about all the things that he will be able to do now that he has free time again. He then thinks about Saori and wonders if she's alright. He decides to try and confess to her even if it gets him killed. Who cares if she was the CEO's side chick? With how fat that dude was, he probably won't be able to outrun the zombies, so he's dead by now. And with that, he rides off on his bike to go find where she lives. But when he gets there, he finds the boss shoes there and the man standing zombified, so he takes the opportunity to hand in his resignation and body slam him out the window. Unfortunately, Saori was also there, and she's also turned into zombie, so with tears in his eyes, he confesses to her to gain closure and runs off to avoid being eaten. That night, he thinks about what he's gonna do from now on, with the state of the world, he could die at any moment, so why not make the most of it? With that, he creates his bucket list of things he wants to do before he dies. The next day, Tendo is having a nightmare about his hellish working conditions and wakes up screaming, but relief washes over him as he realizes that his world is a lot better now. It's a zombie apocalypse, and he's all here for it. With the new zeal he now has for life, he is finally able to clean out his entire room for the first time in years, and he's never felt better. He grabs a beer from the fridge and fully savors the taste as his first beer of freedom. Meanwhile, the news is covering the story as it unfolds. The city is in chaos, there are fires raging everywhere, and the newsroom is also in danger of being overrun. And through all this, the news lady is still standing there doing her job. Tendo watches as the news broadcast cuts out and he knows that objectively, the world has gone to hell. But that's not his problem right now, all he cares about is drinking beer today and lazing around to make up for the years of torture he had put himself through. But when he goes to the fridge to grab another one, he is hit with a grave reality. He's out of beer. This is the worst thing that could possibly have happened to him today. He was going to just laze around, but now he's got to go to get more beer, and it's not gonna be an easy trip. 
But what kind of lazy day would it be if he didn't have beer to drink? So as much as he wants to stay put, he's gonna have to do it. While he's having his moral dilemma in another room, there is a couple who are freaking the hell out over this apocalypse, as one would normally do. The guy tells her that if they can hold out for one more day, then maybe they'll be saved, but no one's coming to save them. He goes out onto the balcony and prays for someone. Anyone to come and help, and as he says this, he locks eyes with Tendo, who is shimmying his way down a pipe. The guy is freaked out and tells Tendo to come in while it's still safe, but Tendo says he's alright for now, and he just has to go grab a few things. He then introduces himself as their next-door neighbor. The guy is taken aback by Tendo's nonchalant attitude while hanging from a pipe, but he introduces himself as Kosaka. Tendo wants to be nice, and since he's going to the convenience store anyway, he offers to get them some stuff like noodles and toilet paper. As Tendo races his bike down the street, the zombies begin to take notice of him and chase him. He realizes that if he gets surrounded, he might actually die here. But there's no way he's going to go the day without any beer, so this is a necessary action. He gets to the convenience store and there's a bike outside the store with a camera on it. He doesn't notice that because he is too focused on getting beer, so he pries the doors open and begins singing his beer song while shopping. Then he notices a girl standing by the fridge and he immediately dies of cringe at the song he was singing. He tries to play it off by acting like nothing happened, but the girl says nothing in return. Things are only going to get more awkward if he stays silent, so he keeps talking. But she just walks past him, so he tries to get her to give her contact info, but she finally says something. He risked his life just to go get some beers, and he didn't even get any water for the hangover. Someone with such poor survival skills would only be a liability to her. And to make it that much worse, he left the door halfway open and now the zombies are coming through. Tendo tries to get in front of her to protect her, but she pulls him back as a truck breaks through the wall, killing the zombies by sheer coincidence. But he did learn some lessons from this. He should analyze the risk before doing something and always close the door. He hopes to meet that girl again, but now isn't the time for that. His bike was destroyed by the truck, so he's got to make a run for it. But there's no way that he's gonna outrun the zombies, so he's got to think of something else. Luckily for him, there's a scooter just laying there and he's able to use that to escape. He's upgraded his ride and that gets him thinking. There are a lot of vehicles with keys still in them since the apocalypse started at rush hour, so maybe there's something better. And just as he thinks that, he spots something out of the corner of his eye. He's now got a hot rod. He finally makes it back to the apartment building and he stops by the apartment of Kosaka. But what he finds is a bloody mess, and I don't think they'll be joining him anytime soon. That night, he was reminded that at any moment he might die. But if that's the case, he still wants to live to the fullest and do all the things he wasn't able to do while he was working. He thinks long and hard and writes down everything that he would want to do. The next day, we see the girl in a penthouse. She begins her morning routine of a 10-kilometer run on a treadmill, and she's taking the serious approach to surviving the zombie apocalypse. She starts analyzing the zombies' movement patterns, but she needs to go down there and actually see the zombies to get that data and also to get supplies. So this is why she was at the convenience store earlier. When she ran into Tendo, she was already analyzing him, and that truck that crashed into the store was predicted. She then looks back on the footage of Tendo that she got, and she thinks to herself that maybe his way of doing things isn't so bad after all. With another set of survivors, there is a little girl crying the loss of her father, and the club manager is trying to console her a little. He tells her that she's done great by hanging in there till now, but as he's talking to her, one of his men comes up to him and tells him that the zombies have returned. The manager tells the girl that he has got to go do something, and he will definitely come back to her. They head out to face the ensuing horde in a badass way and they begin to fight to protect all the people that are left in the club. Meanwhile, Tendo is out here living his best life with his new motorcycle. He's come to the Shinjuku district looking for his best friend, Kencho. Earlier that day, Tendo was trying to grow in a cool beard and to speed it along, he tried using a marker to draw it on, but it doesn't end up looking like he wanted it to, so he gives up on it and just shaves it off. He ponders on what to do today when he finally notices that his phone is receiving messages again. He's really happy to see this because it means that the internet must be back up and running. Since he started working three years ago, he hasn't had any chance to talk to his old friends, so he would really like to get to catch up with them. He sends out a bunch of messages to all of his friends and waits for replies, but then he realizes that the only reason the internet is working again is that network traffic is down, meaning that most of his friends are likely dead by now. This realization makes him really sad. All those years of skipping on hanging out with friends just to work overtime, what a huge waste of time. He keeps scrolling through his contacts and comes across one of his friends, Kencho. Now he knows this guy is a fighter, so there is no way he would just lay down and die like that. Meanwhile, Kencho is about to lie down and die like that. He's been stuck in this room for three days with nothing but water, 
and the hallway is too crowded with zombies for him to have even the slightest hope of escaping. And even worse, he's stuck in here with this zombie woman, and the only that saved him was his love for bondage. He sits there and thinks this is it. His life even starts flashing before his eyes, and he sees memories of Tendo while they were still in college. At that moment, Tendo actually called Kencho, and he was really shocked to see that he got a call. Tendo asks for Kencho's location, and he says he's in Shinjuku. But there's no way that Tendo would be able to make it all the way there without being eaten by any zombies. But that isn't going to stop him, and that is why Tendo went to Shinjuku. On the way, he recalls how he used to meet up with Kencho for drinks, but Kencho was actually a successful real estate contractor, with good pay, high praise from his bosses, and an actual love life. Kencho tells Tendo that he should probably quit his job, but at that point, Tendo was still too deep in the rabbit hole to notice that there was he was actually right. So instead, he gets angry at him and cuts their little hangout short. He never got the chance to apologize for that, so he's going to make sure he does that now. Meanwhile, the manager from before is about to reach his final moments, and as the zombies slowly approach him, he waits for death. However, a car horn in the distance is enough to distract the zombies and make them leave him alone. It also attracts the zombies that are holding Kencho in that room, so Tendo is finally able to go meet him. Kencho finally sees that the zombies are gone, and just then Tendo shows up and starts yelling at the top of his lungs, apologizing for not taking his advice back then and getting jealous of him. But all the shouting draws in more zombies, and they are forced to retreat to the top of the roof. They get up there, but the zombies are right on their tail, so they are now stuck. Kencho thinks this is it for him again, but Tendo isn't about to let it end like this. So Tendo tells Kencho that they should jump across the rooftops, but he isn't too sure he can make the jump. Tendo goes for it, and he makes it, but now it's Kencho's turn, but he doesn't want to do it. He apologizes to Tendo for making him feel jealous back then. The truth is that he hated his job, he was no better than a scum with how he forced people into bad contracts, so he bragged about all the good things he got to cope with it. What he always wanted to be was a stand-up comic. Tendo tells him that it's not too late for that, and Kencho realizes that he doesn't have to give up here, so he starts running and takes the jump, and for some reason, he takes off all his clothes midway through. He isn't able to make the entire jump, so he ends up hanging off a huge ledge, but Tendo pulls him up in time. But the worst thing imaginable happens while he's being pulled up, he scrapes his nuts. After that, the two spend the night drinking naked, as all the homies do. Tendo is playing a zombie video game on the roof, but he dies in the game, so if he rolls back in the hammock he's laying in. Kencho has been cooking for him, and the food is the best thing Tendo has ever tasted. Even though he's amazed with the food, he also comments on how Kencho is probably great at everything. Which would explain why he's so popular with the ladies. Kencho says this much cooking ability is normal, and Tendo's lack of skill is probably why he hasn't had any luck in his love life. Tendo swears that he'll get a date today, but his options are. Well, let's just say they're not ideal. Later, Kencho is taking a look at Tendo's list, and it's kind of unrealistic. Like seriously, what are the chances of him meeting a flight attendant in the apocalypse, and even more so getting the chance to wine and dine them? It would take some cosmic alignment voodoo to get that to happen. But regardless, Tendo is still going to do whatever he wants to do, even if it seems unrealistic. Kencho says that's fine, but the list doesn't even have up to a hundred things on there, so Kencho starts adding his own dream of becoming a stand-up comic to the list, and by proxy, Tendo has to become one too. But since Tendo saved his life, he's along for the ride for anything that he can think of. That being the case, Tendo asks if they can head to the mall to pick up a mega flat screen TV. And so they head out on the hot rod to go get one. But before they can get there, they run into a flaming dead end, and there's even a firefighter still there as a zombie. And to make things worse, Truck Coon comes barreling towards them, and Kencho is freaking the hell out. Tendo has a flashback to what happened back on his beer run, and he gets an idea to jump the tanker. It's a crazy idea, yes, but I don't see Kencho coming up with anything. They manage to jump it, but the tanker explodes in a fiery inferno, forcing them to go into an underground mall to escape the fire. But the mall has a lot of zombies in it, and escape isn't an option anymore, so they jump off the motorcycle and start running to a nearby store with the door slightly open. The zombies chase them, but they manage to make it through and slam the door down on the zombies' fingers. A flashlight turns on, and the two turn around to find three women and one man cowering in the back. They are a bit defensive at first since they don't know if Tendo and Kencho are infected or not, but after they say they aren't, Kencho is thankful that there are other survivors. The girl doesn't see why he's so thankful since they are trapped in here with zombies on all sides, but at least it's a convenience store and they won't be starving anytime soon. If they're going to have to get through this, they aren't going to do it sober. They start scouring the store for food and liquor, and they sit down to share it. 
One of the girls asks if they can introduce themselves. Kencho introduces himself and Tendo and the guy in the corner is still freaking out, so he asks the girls if they know each other. They introduce themselves as Reika, Maki, and Yukari. And when Kencho asks how they know each other, they say they're co-workers and their flight just landed in Japan when this whole mess started. They are flight attendants. Tendo realizes that this is finally his chance to whine and dine a flight attendant, but they are obviously upset about the situation. And in that moment, he also realizes that he has absolutely no game. He goes up to Eureka and tries to talk to her, but his lack of game is very evident. He starts thinking about what to do and looks to Kencho for help, but my guy is already there rising up Maki. And as Tendo is standing there, watching the master work his magic, Kencho looks at him and gives him a devious smile to rub it in. Tendo is at a loss for what to do, so he tries to be funny and snorts a whole bottle of alcohol. And that gets everyone in a partying mood. Later, Tendo is puking his guts out when Eureka comes to check on him, and he thinks he might still have a chance. Rika is still drinking and is currently venting all her frustration on the cowering guy, and yo, what the fuck? This dude was bitten, and he just didn't tell anybody. As Rika continues rambling, the dude comes up from under her, and she thinks he's trying to eat her out, but she isn't going to let him. He does indeed want to eat her, but more in a literal sense. Her screams are heard all across the store and wake up Kencho and Maki. Maki has had the brain screwed out of her, so she couldn't care less about the scream she just heard, and Tendo is still in the bathroom with Eureka. She lets him down nicely and tells him that she actually already has a boyfriend. Kencho and Maki finally come down to check on Rika, and Maki is still dazed and confused. But when they find Rika turn into a zombie, she immediately lunges at Maki and rips her face off. She then lunges at Kencho, but he knocks her lights out with a suitcase. But where did the old man go? Tendo and Eureka are having a chat about their jobs, and she shares with him how an old man made her question every choice that led her to become a flight attendant. And while they are finally bonding and talking about their dreams, the old man comes down the stairs and bites her before they can react. Tendo knocks the man down the stairs, but he doesn't want to leave her here. However, he has no choice as she is going to turn soon, and the old man is still here. He starts crying as he runs away and meets Kencho, who has a surprise for him. He managed to grab the flat screen TV. The two manage to escape on their motorcycle, and Tendo is reflecting on what just happened. He's going to make sure that he can remember what his dream was, and he adds it to the list. When Tendo was younger, he used to be a young John Wick. He would take on upperclassmen like it was his normal morning routine, all for the sake of a nice dog. He was something of a superhero back then, however, he wakes up from his dream. Later on, Kencho is checking out the news and confirms that Japan is thoroughly screwed. However, the military was able to secure some of the more secluded villages in the mountains. Hearing this, Tendo thinks his family must be safe, since they are in one of the most secluded villages in Japan. Later, while Tendo is helping Kencho get his hair for his new beginning, he makes a declaration. He's going to become John Wick. He plans to become someone who goes around saving people from zombies, but Kencho is a little skeptical. For one thing, Tendo doesn't even have a gun, but he's already thought of something to fix that. And a new item has been added to the list to become a superhero. The two later head to the aquarium for Tendo's plan, and it's in pretty bad shape since all the workers had abandoned it. They look around the place for a bit until Tendo finds just what he was looking for. Meanwhile, a bus full of people is getting stuck in the zombie traffic, and the driver tells them that they are going to have to wait out the horde. But at least they are in a sealed bus, and there is no way any zombies are going to be getting in. Come on, what the hell? Well, now thanks to this guy, all the bus passengers have to run for their lives, and now they are getting slaughtered. This one girl has managed to escape so far, and she's run towards the aquarium. As she spots it, she thinks she will be safe once she gets inside, but then horror movie logic kicks in, and she falls over. And unfortunately for her, Yusin Bolt was in the zombie crowd, and he is making a mad dash straight for her. As she's about to become zombie food, Tendo runs out of the aquarium and tackles Bolt, launching him a good 10 meters away. This was his secret weapon. He got Shark's suit from the aquarium to protect him from the zombie bites, and if a shark can't get through this stuff, then there's no way a zombie is going to. And with that, he has achieved his superhero goal. He spots more people who need help and tells all of them to head into the aquarium for safety. And among the people, he notices his second crush there. But he has no time to think about that because Bolt is back for round two. And while the suit may be able to prevent bites from getting through, it's still going to hurt like hell. And after he falls to the ground, he gets swarmed by the Olympic team and Kencho just goes, you are on your own, buddy. Tendo eventually manages to throw the zombies off the bridge and into the river, and luckily for him, they hadn't trained for the triathlon. He had his back into the aquarium and Kencho greets him like he didn't just leave him out there. After that, Tendo goes up to her talk, and while he just wanted to talk, she starts roasting my man's entire existence. 
Kencho tries to defend Tendo's honor, but the roasting was too thorough. After that, there is a loud crash sound heard throughout the entire aquarium. Tendo and Kencho decide to go check it out, but when they find the source of the sound, they find something horrifying. The zombies couldn't find any swimmers, so they called in a shark. The shark starts chasing them, and they run to warn all the other people. Tendo tries to stay behind and fight, but then he realizes that is a shark with legs. You don't mess with a shark with legs. They get cornered in a room with even more zombies, and they start heading for the emergency exit, but then this girl just grabs Tendo's crush, stops for a second, and then pushes her aside because she's scared. And now Tendo's crush is likely a gunner. Upon realizing that she isn't in there with them, Kencho tries to go help her, but the door has been warped too much for it to open. He looks around to ask Tendo what he should do, but Tendo already left to help. On the other end, Tendo's crush is faced with a huge shark, and she can only blame herself for not realizing that you never stay with large groups during zombie chase. She has accepted her death, but Tendo hasn't so he jumps from an air vent and tackles the shark. She is shocked that he would risk his life to come save her even after the roasting she gave him. What reason does he have for coming back? But Tendo doesn't need a reason to help someone, he is just doing what he wants to do. She is amazed by Tendo's resilience and asks him if he's got a plan yet, but he hasn't thought of one. As they run, she comes up with a plan to beat the shark. Since sharks are sensitive to electric charges, if they were to shock it, it would become confused and unable to attack them. While distracting the shark, Tendo gets smacked through a wall and is down for the count and Kencho is trying to figure out a way to save him before he becomes shark food. So he comes up with a foolproof plan. He's going to bait the shark with his ass. But once the shark takes the bait, he starts to regret his decision. But that distraction was enough to let Tendo get back up, and the girl has finally found some batteries, so she tosses them to him and he uses them to shock the shark silly. After escaping, they walk out together and Kencho asks if she isn't going to follow the either group, but she says she's done with groups for now. She still doesn't understand why Tendo would risk his life for her, but Tendo says she's someone precious to him now, so he would save her regardless. This gets her flustered, and she finally agrees to give Tendo her contact information. Next, Tendo is going to his parents' village, Gamma. This was the end of episode 5. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more.